Okay, so time for the midsection of section two, the seam that goes in here. Okay, so remember the overpass is here. It's all finished and built, and now it's moved out of the way. So now I'm going to site prep uh, for what's going to go on here in this particular area, midsection of section two, okay? The next scene, uh, this side of the overpass, okay? Because the overpass is going to act like a chapter division or, a, or like another zone, another scenic zone, right? Trains pass underneath, you know, you get closer on the scene, you can focus, move around, model an area, and then the overpass acts as not only a feature but a transition or a change up of the story which will be an industry on the other side so i'm not going to go into this part uh really that much because i've already covered this if you go to the home page under boomer diorama under videos on the tab on the top you'll see that there's a video section you can scroll backwards for a long ways and uh, the vlogs go all the way back to number one. And then prior to that, I didn't actually index them with vlogs. But now there's 120 plus videos that have all been indexed under the vlog heading because of the style. I explain that further back why I changed that a more live kind of coverage, uh, chronological build of the whole uh, River Road shelf layout. OK, so I talk about this uh, under the buried track segments. Okay, this is one eighth balsa. I just glue it with the pages over top of my cork. Why put cork down? Well, because I don't like, I'm not really sure sometimes when I lay cork ahead of time, what's going to really happen. Sometimes I might maybe add a track or change something up. And I like the sound deadening anyway. When you do balsa wood and, or sorry, cork and balsa wood, oh my goodness. Uh, you could be working below and be up over here and you won't hear nothing down below. So, that's what I like about it. It's a really uh, like absorbs vibration sound and it's lightweight. Uh, so if you're into lightweight bench work, which I am, it's very rigid due to curved fascia and so on. This is incredibly like I could sleep on this. This is like a cot. But anyway, so I've glued this down with LePages. OK. Put weights on it. Uh, this one I had a little bit of movement. So what I did was, was I planed it down like there was a little bit of a section in here that uh, when I got the weights down everything it just the nature of the beast right stuff happens so what I did was I planed this down and it left some tool marks which I'm okay with because I don't let those things bother me because I'm going to let those tool marks even though I, I've sanded this down I'm going to let them play later right because they create little anomalies that you don't think of in this particular case which will be an ash vault parking lot okay and I've and I've laid down two sheets here one eighth ball so I'm not worried about the perimeter yet because I'm gonna deal with this edge later that's the beauty of uh, one eighth balsa and I got quarter inch cork right so I have some depth to play with here right okay Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I want to talk about uh, this signature scene between the old growth forest section, which is going to be on the left here, and the overpass on the right. And I'll just show you a photo of the area or the space that I want to implement this scene into, or this idea that I'm working on right now, okay? Okay, so now, right now I'm in the planning stage and what's driving this is a passion for uh, some of the uh, architecture or the architectural influences I grew up as a kid, which stem from, from the very house I grew up in that was built in the 20s through the 30s, 40s, eh, 50s maybe, but not really. But I want to put a diner in this space. Now the tracks are here. There's three tracks here. Okay, well, but well, it looks like three or four, and then there's the overpass. So uh, I want to put a diner in here because a lot of these diners, there were diners. Actually, there's still diners like this that uh, are open today uh, in Kitsilino. Um, you know that uh, represent what I want to 
express here. Now this idea obviously comes from the inspirational painting of Edward Hopper. You know the one Nighthawks where it only shows like seven stools there and then the corner, right? Like you're looking in, right? At that famous painting, uh, it shows from this angle. Actually, I'll show you a, a, a quick photo of the painting that most people are familiar with. Okay, so that painting has inspired, you know, film, theater, models, you know, other renditions of it, right? So I'm going to do my version of it. Um, like this is close to the painting, but you have to remember that when Edward Hopper painted this scene, right, he didn't care about the prototype in that sense. He took the influences that he felt, feeling, that he felt at night with the light. His emphasis was light and shadow. So much of the actual diner is like if you're to build a model of it you have to interpret it because there's no real like actual building so there's there's buildings that are like it but so i'm going to put my version into that and um, there are models that are built at this diner i know but i'm building my own so right so i want it to be my uh, interpretation and expression of it even though there's some nice model kits that are built of this particular diner in different scales. So that's what I'm going to do. And furthermore, the models that I've seen that are built only have this much of the diner in it. This is the floor plan and that, right? Okay. It gets built out like that. Whereas I want to build the whole diner. Even though they're compact anyway, um, I want to build the whole diner. So Because I feel it has more length to it. So. Uh, that's not shown in the painting. So I'm going to have this there. Now, these facades that I built are going to be backdrops, okay? So they're going to be in behind. I haven't decided how I'm going to arrange those yet. And then there's another model that I want to build that I have to build. And I either build it separately for in O scale, or I'm going to build it in HO and I'm going to incorporate it into the scene. Because I want to be able to have this scene to... Uh, to uh, uh, depict it at night as well with all the lights, you know, like the lights spilling out of the diner onto the pavement and the track. Because this is going to be the scene set in this space. And it's going to, I want to create a lot of mood and drama with it. And then I want to also have an alleyway too. Like if this is the old growth section here, uh, I want to be able to see from only from this angle though, in behind here, like an alleyway. And then with facades back here. And then possibly the, the theater facade somewhere in here just to create an angle uh, even though it'll be cut off against the backdrop but I want to depict that feeling even if it's whimsical with the old growth treed section here I don't care I know exactly what I want to create here and uh, you know, it's just something that I want to do that's very important to me because I've already devoted section one completely to prototypical practice. The track is prototypical and then on section three, I'll be returning back to a more prototypical practice. But this section two, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be basically freelanced, okay, up to the overpass. And then on the other side of the overpass is going to be probably a plastics industry, right? That's That's the plan. But right now, this is going to be a series, a short series, but interspersed, right? Chronologically under the vlog style of the channel, so watch for it. Okay, this is the introduction, and then I'm going to cover this build. This is going to be more involved than anything I've done on River Road so far, okay? It, believe me, and I'm going to be at it for a while. So, you know, somebody mentioned earlier, oh, it's going to be sad to see the build end, you know, at the rate it's going. No, like you can't predict that. This is halfway, right? And it's been a, it's almost a year and a half now. So conceivably, there's at least another couple of years left on River Road. Plus, I haven't even built the barge ferry. I haven't returned to do other layers of details. So for those of you that are signing on or subscribing, you're in for a, for a long ride. So and the content that I want to share is getting more and more exciting. And furthermore, I'm upgrading my equipment more for higher resolution. I'm part of my goal for um, 
next year spring is to go to 4k we'll see how the youtube platform it isn't something that's really taken off yet because 1080p hd is already pretty good more lighting you know things like that right okay and uh, uh, uh maybe it's some additional equipment cranes for my you know filming the layout and operations too like just let me answer this in closing some of you might say well where's the railroad and all this well if you go back chronologically in the videos you know there's loads of railroad the whole theme is built around the railroad it's built around s uh sorry bc hydro rail which i grew up around as a kid which is not far from all of this then it became Southern British Columbia Railway, which the acronym is still used, SRY, but now Rail Link, owned by Washington Corp. So the railroad is all very much still in place, except for the line that ran close to this area has been closed. But the actual railroad still functions. It's about 100 miles long. But anyway, and all the equipment is original. All the EMD, SW, uh, the uh, uh, MP15s, the SW900RSs, the SD38s, they're all still running, been rebuilt, you know, so, and those are the models, uh, locomotives that I model uh, in River Road, uh, plus the rolling stock, so, okay, so uh, this is going to be really exciting, like I say, I'll be doing this as I move along and cycling back to revisit other areas and so on, and then covering this as a uh, separate series, right? which I haven't really named the actual area yet, uh, but that's coming. So uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, feel free to follow the channel, to follow the build. And thank you for all your support and happy modeling. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.